I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus in Denver, and uh, today we're going to be working on treating these Nakona boots that are actually kangaroo. They do fall into the exotics category as well. Um, kangaroo is not very common, at least not here for us. Um, we see it every now and then, but not, not as often as we see some other things. But we're going to go ahead and treat these and take care of them. Now, um, I do want to mention also, I did already resole these here. I'm still working on finishing everything out, of course. That's another video if you want to check that out. This is a side video of treating the uppers on these. Again, because it's more of an exotic type of uh, leather upper considered to be. Now, um, kangaroo is considered to be leather. Um, it works the same way as actually your regular cowhide, your full grain leathers and everything. So you actually treat them pretty much the same. You know, there there is a pore structure in here, um, so it binds and absorbs your conditioners very well. But again, you still want to treat them. And um, this is just the steps you want to do to treat and maintain them. And we're going to show you that today. Short of, of course, you know, taking care of the edges. We're not going to do that because I already, you know, varnished the edges during the resold process. So I won't be able to show you that, unfortunately. But I'll show you a few samples of products that will help you significantly with that. All right, so I'm going to grab my towel here. Now, kangaroo, again, like I said, is very similar to your full grain leathers, but it is still softer. So I don't recommend using something too strong on it for cleaning, like uh, acetone, any form of thinner, spot remover. Um, alcohol may be one of the strongest you may want to use, or what we prefer to use, something a little bit stronger, is the Reno mat as well. This is a natural pine-based turpentine mainly in here, and it's formulated specifically to remove any old polishes, waxes, and other residues that may be in there. If you're needing just a light clean, you know, um, the next step that we're going to be doing will actually do plenty good with that and you're not needing to really use this cleaning solution. But the first step that we have to do here at our shop, because everything to us is a mystery, we don't know if the person who owns these boots has used any form of product, has um, used any kind of waxes or conditioners on it and we have to remove it beforehand because if he's got wax on there the conditioners don't penetrate very well i mean most of the time we can tell by the feel but sometimes it may have you know settled in so well into those pores that it's just not going to come out anymore and we love to use Saphir. Saphir is our number one product, of course, that we use. We use a few other additional ones here and there, but for different tasks. But for these here, this is what we're using today. Now, if you also had uh, a pair of the, these kangaroo boots or kangaroo shoes that were, say, muddy or dirty or anything like that, um, or they have salt staining, now you wouldn't use this here to clean or treat it for that. It gets a little costly to do so. Um, what you would actually do is, if you have salt stains, uh, first treat it with uh, salt remover or white vinegar. Salt remover will be a little bit better and stronger, but at the very least, white vinegar will help. Just put some on a rag and scrub it down. Here at our shop, we have a solution mixed up with uh, so, uh, salt remover or desalter some people call it and white vinegar mixed in here we just wrote vinegar though on it and we spray down the whole boot because we're treating everything but in your case that uh, you know that can be an option but if you're only wanting to do a little bit you know put some on the rag and scrub those areas and right afterwards then you move on to using this right here either angelus easy cleaner or the lincoln easy cleaner there's a few other brands out there too that will help you clean a lot of that off very well. Oh, hang on just a second, I got a visitor. It's the weekend, so I got uh, the kiddos and my wife here. Are you really, really trying to beat me up? Sorry about that. That's what happens when you're a dad. You got your boys coming in trying to beat you up. <laughs> but anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh, the cleaning, yes. So the easy cleaner will be 
what you would want to use next anyways. It just uh, helps significantly to clean off a lot of those areas. You could buy them in just an 8 ounce bottle. I believe they also have quart size and gallon size. We only carry the 8 ounce bottles, but if you request, we can get the larger ones in as well. I believe they were a quart size, but you know, that will work out great as an option. And it's great stuff to have around anyways uh, for other leathers such as suede and nubuck because there are no solvents in your easy cleaners um, so they're not going to be nearly as strong and you can use it on suede and nubuck very well okay now after applying the reno mat we're gonna go ahead and let it dry and let that turpentine evaporate out of here um, you know, it is turpentine, it is still a solvent, and you want to make sure you allow that to evaporate before you start applying any conditioners or creams or polishes. Even though some of the polishes we'll be using today have turpentine in there, this is liquid form. It's going to soak in a little bit more than a hard form of what we are going to be using um, for our creams and polishes and waxes. But as we go through, I'll explain it more and more. So, otherwise, if you'd like, you can always skip a little bit of a head when we're doing the next stages. Okay. All right, all done. Now the uppers, you, the upper shafts also, you don't always need to treat them, especially if you're doing it yourself. You know exactly what you did. If you only treated the bottom, you only need to go through the bottom section to clean it off. You don't always have to clean off the top. For us, you know, because this is the first time we've had these boots in, we've never touched them before. We, they got their first set of soles and everything. We don't know what's on here. We don't know how they've been treated. So we still have to clean everything off the top so that we can allow conditioners to soak in. In your case, if you're doing it yourself, you know that you only put conditioners up here. You don't need to, you know, you don't need to strip it down. And I only recommend using conditioners on the shaft area. Don't use waxes, don't use um, you know pigmented cream polishes. Just your basic conditioners will be good for that. But uh, I'll let these dry and I'll be back here in just a little bit to keep going on our next step then. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, so we've allowed these to dry. It's been actually a little over 25 minutes now. Got a little sidetracked up front, had to help out a few customers there, but Anyways, um, we've got everything cleaned up now. Now we're gonna move on to the Saphir Medal Dior Renovating Cream. They do have a step down from it in their Beauty De Cure line, the Saphir Renovator as well. Um, but for these, I think we should be using only the best. Uh, the Medal Dior is definitely a good step up. So I'll start out by explaining the uh, Renovator Cream from their Beauty De Cure line, which comes with a blue label on it instead of these, this gold label, and it's a round jar also but uh, I should have probably grabbed it. And I don't even think I have one back here. I just have very large ones anyways. But that one has, um, it's the base on it is water. And uh, the key two ingredients is your beeswax and mink oil. So they work very, very well to condition and do a very light cleaning because of that water being the base. This one has the same thing in it, but it's much more refined. And it also has added as a key ingredient your lanolin so it comes in handy a lot of times for penetrating something with a tighter pore structure um, such as these they're a bit tighter pore structure i mean they'll still take on the regular beauty to cure renovator uh, fairly well but with the lanolin it definitely definitely ups it significantly and uh, again that water um, that's that it's based off of will help clean it so if you're not needing to go through the whole cleaning process with the reno mat or anything else using just this will be perfectly fine afterwards once it's uh, soaked in and dried for about five maybe ten minutes um, the wax the beeswax that's in it will dry and that's what will give you a little bit more of that shine definitely so and I like to use these dauber brushes here, the horsehair dauber brushes. This is a new one, so it's flaking off on me a little bit. But because I can get into nooks and crannies. Now this is a smoother leather, of course, so I could use a rag, but even though I cleaned out the welt here, getting in there with a little bit of conditioning helps out a lot because this is a leather welt on here. 
So, gotta make sure we treat the welds every now and then too. I mean, even if you have a plastic weld, this will come in handy to help things out. Oh, and I did forget to mention at the very beginning, because since I've been working on these boots already, before starting the whole cleaning process or before using the renovator cream, grab a large horsehair brush. I highly recommend that you have a few of these, at least in light color and dark color to have for all your footwear. But just grab it and buff it over, clean off any dust or dirt off of there, and then start your process that we have been doing here now. I didn't show that again because I, of course, I've been already blowing off dust off of it and everything, so I didn't need to do that in the beginning, but for you, anyone at home that's watching this and you're going to be treating your own boots, definitely want to make sure you are buffing them off. And a horsehair brush is very important to have, you know. If you bring your boots, shoes, or whatever other items you may have that are leather, that have been treated, shined, conditioned, whatever it may be, just because it looks a little raggedy doesn't mean you have to bring it back in right away to have the full upper treated again. If you have a horsehair brush, I highly recommend first thing in the morning when you get up and you're about to put them on, or if you're about to go out to an event, take the horsehair brush, and just buff it vigorously, don't press too hard, and it'll bring back a shine to them. At the end of the event or at the end of the day when you come home, brush them off again, get any dust, dirt, or debris off, and then set them on the shelf. And if you have boot trees or shoe trees, definitely stick them in. Um, boot trees and shoe trees are very important. They keep the shape of the foot area, and they also help wick away moisture and keeps the um, keeps the leather from collapsing and creasing too much. You can see a little bit of creases showing there. Unfortunately, that's that's what will happen if you don't have boot trees. So I may have to get after this gentleman just a little bit for some boot trees. He must get them. Even if he doesn't get them from us, if he gets them from another store, I'm fine with that. Get boot trees in your boots cedar ones preferably the cedar will always be better than plastic it helps wick away that moisture much better and the smell too plastic will not do that all right now after i'm gonna do this again like i said i only need a few minutes on it and uh got my youngest son there vlad running around drawing yeah you're drawing But I'm gonna let this soak in for about uh, five to 10 minutes and dry. And then I'll be back over here in a little bit to do the next steps on it. And we'll go from there. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. I'll just finish out with the rest of the renovator cream here and we'll move on. So we'll see you in a bit. All right, so I've given these a few minutes now, now that everything's a little dried. And of course I got a little bristle of the brush on there. And again, this is where your horsehair brush comes in, just to buff it up. So if you're only using this one product on here, the Saphir Renovator, or Renovatoire, some people call it, in the industry, it's nicknamed the liquid gold because it, if you were to pick just one product to use on the majority of your footwear, this is what you would get, is that Renovator there. But of course, if you just apply it on its own, it's only going to do the conditioning aspect and protecting aspect. As far as bringing out a shine on it, you have to have a horsehair brush for it. You can tell mine's very used and worn out. It's a very old brush, but it's got a good buildup of waxes in it, and it just it works perfectly, at least for us. But this will give you an idea of the difference. You know, you can see a little bit of a shimmer there on that one, where not so much on this one. It looks fairly dull. So what happens when you only apply, you know, polishes or whatever product you may have without buffing it afterwards. You know, definitely want to make sure to buff it. And that's exactly the same thing that will happen after we do a full treatment and say this gentleman wears them for a month or something like that. They're going to start to look less and less shiny. Well, the friction that's caused by brushing 
with a horsehair brush, it remelts those waxes just a little bit and brings back a shine, definitely. So it's, it's one of those things that either way, you do want to make sure you're conditioning every couple of months, basically. You know, Renovator Cream will work perfectly fine. Doing a full treatment like we're doing here today, you probably want to do that maybe once every 6 to 12 months. Um, that's, again, because we're using the Renov uh, Reno mat on there to remove everything. But otherwise, you can reapply a polish as needed and everything. You know, so we'll get to that in a minute, and I'll talk more about it then. But at this point, now everything is ready. If you're happy with uh, the outcome here with just the Renovator Cream to condition and bring up a little bit of a shimmer on there, you're perfectly fine. You're done. You can move on. Otherwise, to take it a step up, we're going to be using some of the Saphir Medal Dior Pomadier Cream. They also have their Seraphin Cream from their Beauty De Cure line, which is very similar, but a step down, of course. And this is, of course, pigmented. It's got color in it. Now, I picked out uh, the Medium Brown number 37, which, as you can tell, is definitely darker. But these do need a little more color restoration and again because the pore structure is a little bit uh, a little bit denser in it you want to um, you may want to use something just a tad bit darker you know on some of your other exotics you actually wouldn't be using the pomadier cream because it does have turpentine in there the solvent turpentine to soften up the waxes in here um, there is of course your beeswax there's a little bit of carnauba wax and a few other ones as well in there and um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, again, it's pigmented, so it's gonna restore color, but the pigment is somewhat transparent as well, so it's still going to show um, the natural patina of the leather, the natural coloring and variance, um, some of the scuffings possibly too, but it'll at least help restore it just ever so slightly. But uh, I may have to hold off on that and I'll be right back just a second. Sorry about that. Uh, grab the front real quick but anyways at this point we're gonna do the same thing and apply all of this on here sorry camera cut out on me there but this will again only restore just a little bit of the color you know certain scuffs and everything but some of the natural patina that may occur unfortunately it won't do much for it in that case, we gotta do a little dye touch up sometimes with uh, spray dyes or a acrylic airbrush dye as well. I personally don't like using it all that much. I may have to just a little bit in a few spots on these. Um, you know, just like back here, looks like it got worn a little bit more. So I'll have to do just a little touch up on it. Now this, I like to brush a little bit right away not buff it but just brush it to get a little bit of the access off just a slight amount okay and again i'm only doing the bottom section so the foot area i'm not doing the shaft area here the shaft did get the uh conditioner on there the renovator but again because this is pigmented and it has more waxes on there the shaft usually you can see it bends all the time it's constantly moving and everything those waxes tend to come off easier and they'll come off onto your clothing and you don't want you don't want that happening so don't shine or wax the shafts of the boot unless you're going to be using them for decorative display purposes pretty much then at that point by all means make it as shiny as you want but if you're gonna be wearing them don't do that okay there we go buff off a little bit of access and again because there's turpentine in here and it's a little more liquidy still too, not completely. I'm gonna give these about roughly 10 minutes uh, to dry as well. You know, kinda, kinda takes a bit of time if you're doing only one pair. Usually we're doing multiple pairs, but for the video purposes, of course, I'm doing just the one pair for you guys to be able to see. Well, I'm doing other things in between, not shining other boots and shoes though. But I did want to mention if you end up using dauber brushes like we do here, make sure you clean them. Just use a rag like that and just wipe it off. You can see quite a bit access coming off. 
It extends the life expectancy of your brushes a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. So, otherwise, if you're using a cloth of some sort, a shine chamois, a rag, or something to apply any of the creams, you know, you can toss it afterwards or, you know, keep using it. You saw the rag that I was using for cleaning. It's a little, a little dirty, but there's a lot of clean spots on it. And those clean spots is, are what we use, basically. We've got to go through the whole rag before we toss it. It's very wasteful just to keep tossing them all the time. We don't want to do that. But, um, anyways, at this point, I'll go ahead and let everything dry and let that turpentine evaporate. And then we'll come back here and then move on to our... Um, last stage that we're gonna be doing on these so we'll see you back in just a little while there all right so we've given them about 10 minutes uh, to dry and let the turpentine evaporate we'll grab our horsehair brush again and again buff it light pressure and just fast helps smoothen out those waxes in there So again, big difference, well in person at least, you can see that toe is a little more reflective. That one's, you know, somewhat reflective but still a little dull. You know, your brush, horsehair brushes are very important. Even if you're not, you know, wanting to invest in to shine your own boots or shoes ever, just for your most basic care and treatment, have a horse hair brush. If you want the rest of it, we can handle, or any other shoe shine specialist, leather expert, or cobbler will shine up your boots and shoes, but have some horse hair brushes. Your, one for your dark colors and one for your light colors, two brushes at least, and that's it. All right, now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and touch up some of this with some um, spray dye. I'm gonna do that off camera just a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, a few spots that seem to have had some good wear on it. Well, you know, I might not even have to actually, well, yeah, at least this one here, that one, it's got a little bit of a spot there looking. So let me go take care of that and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so just, touched it up just a tiny bit basically I don't want to add too much I really don't like using any form of spray dyes basically you know unless I'm airbrushing alcohol based dye because I'm re dyeing something completely then that's perfectly fine or if I'm doing some kind of custom color restoration thing on man-made material or something not like that but upper treatment I'd much rather not on leathers especially but anyway, so this is going to be our last step, of course, second to last step before letting it dry and buffing. But now we're going to move on to the Saphir Modal Dior Pate Deluxe Wax. Um, this, of course, is going to be your harder waxes. This is what will bring out the coloring, well, not coloring, the shine as well, protect it the most as well, and, um, you know, will just give it that nice finished look. Two. and I'm using the number three light brown now at this point again I used number 37 medium brown for the color restoration on it I could have used the light brown on it as well but that light brown was just a little bit too light and I always prefer to go a little bit darker if so um, just because it tends to fix up the colors a little bit now the pigment is transparent anyways in here as well as in here but even more so in the waxes so if I use black on this right now it wouldn't really make it black it would make it just maybe a few tints darker and if it, even that if so but anyways this also does have turpentine so we're gonna have to let it dry afterwards and I'm just applying with just my fingers here Now, as far as just applying it again with just your fingers is what I recommend. You can use a cloth as well, but you do get a little too much on there. And the Saphir waxes, they're very soft. They're very, very soft. So, you know, 
just applying it with the finger will do plenty good. It gives a nice, even, thin coat. We don't want too thick of a coat on there. And just kind of massage it in and rub it in. You could also use a dauber too, but I would not, uh, not recommend it just because at that point you're definitely getting too much of that on there. Again, I like to apply a second coat onto the toe. That's why I start out with it first. Just helps it a little bit better with more of a shine because usually it's the toe that you want to apply a second coat. You can technically apply a second coat all across the boot as well, um, but I don't recommend it on that just because these areas here where when you're walking, it creases. So the waxes, once they harden, they have a tendency to crack. So you definitely don't wanna, don't wanna add too much on there. And of course the heel area here because that is a harder area that doesn't bend or flex. Second coat comes in handy a lot to protect it and give it more of that shine too. There we go. Now at this point, I'll go ahead and finish off this other one off camera. Um, it's the same exact process, but I'm gonna allow it about 15 minutes uh, to dry it again, to let that turpentine evaporate out of there because there is turpentine in here uh, to soften up the waxes when you're applying it. Afterwards, to give it that final shine, the friction is what we're gonna use to really shine it up. So I'll go ahead and get that taken care of and we'll see you back here in just a few to finish everything up. All right, so we've given these some time to dry and let that turpentine kind of evaporate out of there. Now, like always, we go back to the horsehair brush again. And we'll just buff it over nice and quickly. Now you can always use a shine chamois as well to shine. Well, give them a buff, especially on the toe area because it's nice and soft cotton material usually. And then you just grab both end ends and buff the toe, but you need to be able to have it wedged, you know, either between your knees while you're sitting down or something. But, you know, we don't uh, really do that because we do have uh, buffing machines that have horsehair brushes on there like this. They're just round and they spin really fast. So that friction really gives them a good shine, but there you go, again, with the buffing really makes quite a bit of a difference there. All right, and that's before we even hit it on the brush, uh, on our shine machine to buff it up and give it that final shine, which I will do. I'll do that off camera and then show you the, the final view on it, at least, at least a little bit side by side, I guess. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, do this one real quick on the machine. I'll be right back. All right, that was quick. So it's not too much. Well, I guess maybe quite a bit more different. This is the one I just did on the machine. So definitely, definitely has more of a reflection to it. That one was the one I did by hand. Still has a nice shine when you do it by hand, but the machine definitely gives it a nice top off there. But I'll go ahead and finish off that other one off camera. But anyways, to recap, start out with uh, cleaning with the Saphir Reno mat. Then for the conditioning, we use the Saphir Renovating Cream in the Medal Dior line, of course. The Palmadier Cream from the Medal Dior line in the medium brown number 37. Some people are very particular about trying to find out what color I was using. And then the Pate Deluxe wax in the Medal Dior as well in the number three light brown. And um, that's kind of how we finished it off. Again, your most important product you will ever own in your arsenal is going to be the Saphir Renovating Cream. Um, that's the most important one that I would recommend as far as a product goes. As far as tools, your horsehair brushes like this, the larger ones, 
very important to have for your entire shoe collection for your finished leathers um, it wouldn't hurt to have a third one to have for your suede or new bucks or anything like that that's a bit softer just to brush off some of the dirt or debris a nylon brush would actually be even better in that case but at the very least you know something soft like that will wouldn't hurt but you don't want to use the brushes that you use on your finished leathers like this on your suede and new bucks because the transfer of waxes and polish may get onto your suede or new bucks so don't do that please otherwise you know it may involve having to do a full in-depth cleaning of the suede and in some cases it can sometimes get pricey considering it's just a you know cleaning you know that we're doing for a pair of boots or shoes but anyways uh, that was the process we did for these Nakona um, kangaroo boots again I was uh, in the middle of still finishing out the video on the resole process on these using our house grade leather and if you'd like to check out that video you can definitely do so I'll try to link it in the description down below um, one other step I did forget to mention which I'll probably grab that tool hang on anyways one other thing I forgot to mention, of course, is the edging. Again, we didn't uh, do it in this video, but if you are going to be doing it, you're not resoling it, or you know, in our case as well, if we're not resoling the boots or shoes, um, we tend to use the Phoebe's edge dressing, but we have larger containers that we get that has a little more wax concentration in it. This is one that you can purchase. This is one of their smaller uh, ones. They have one a little bit larger too. And just to restore the edging on it, it comes in black and brown. The brown is a little bit on the darker side. So if you need a lighter one, you may have to you know, change out to something like this. Or if you have an even darker one, something that's almost black but not quite black and it's like a dark brown, you could use the Saphir Renovating Repair Cream, which is a highly pigmented uh, paste, basically. And you just apply it using your finger, going through around the edges. And I recommend uh, probably doing that after cleaning it, of course, because the cleaning solution, after doing the whole upper treatment, I recommend doing that last just because, you know, you already have some form of protection of the waxes and everything on there. So if some manages to get on there, you can wipe it off. And even if you need to, worst case, use the Reno mat in that spot again. Uh, after that's all dry, of course, we like to also use a toothbrush shaped horsehair brush like this uh, with the Saphir Pate Deluxe waxes like that. Um, usually we use neutral, sometimes you can use a dark brown, medium brown, black, whatever you feel more comfortable with. We just take one of these and of course clean out the edges first. That's part of the brushing process in the very beginning to brush off the dust and dirt. Use this to clean this all out but when it's time to finish everything off, just dab a little bit of that wax on there and work it into the welt area here and onto the edging. It gives it a nice shiny finish as well. Again, give it time to dry. Uh, about 10-15 uh, minutes, it's perfectly good to let that turpentine evaporate and then afterwards hit it with a larger horsehair brush. But anyways, before I keep going on too much and you know, possibly getting off topic or anything. I hope you enjoyed the video on uh, the process it took to treat these. Again, we have that other video if you want to check that out as well of the resole process on these. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you have a specific type of exotic or if you have a regular, you know, uh, full grain treated leather upper as well, you know, feel free to ask any questions that you may have. You can give us a call, message us, or if you're local here in the Denver area, stop on by. If you'd like to have us work on any of your boots, shoes, or other leather items, uh, you can always drop them into us if you're local. If you're not local, go to our website, cobblersplus.com, and under the ship and orders, follow the instructions to fill out the PDF file that you print out and ship them on over to us, and we'll be happy to service whatever items you may have. And if you've enjoyed this video and uh, would like to see more, please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell icon uh, for when we release more videos. I will have more and more as time goes by with different types of leather upper treatments, exotics, um, you know, product testing, recommendation and reviews, as well as full restorations and you know, resoling as well and things that we tend to do here at the shop sometimes. But uh, anyways, we'll just see you next time then.